Gene Deal. Once again, man, happy to have you on the platform, my guy. So with that being said, man, I mean, we're going to get right into it. Little Roy, how you feel about this lawsuit he got against Diddy? Well, I want to get into this real quick, man, before we really even get started into this. And it's because something I seen today, this girl, Tiffany Red, she said that she was filing a claim against Diddy. But it, my man, it touched me crazy, man, because the hurt that I seen in her voice, in her, her, she crying, man, and she worrying about what this dude could do to her and what he has done to her. Man, listen here, I want to let this young lady know, and I know this is not the place for it, brother, but please allow me to say this to her, man. You know what I'm saying? I started this battle long time ago. And the situation is, is that, bruh, we already won. This was some spiritual sh that popped. The spirit of Pac, the spirit of Big, the spirit of Miss Jones, the spirit of Wolf, all the people that he has done wrong, you know, so black, all the people that he has done wrong, bruh, is coming to light. We already won this sh spiritual. What we going through right now with these trials and everybody, you know, with this financial situation and everything like that, all that is superficial. That's that. That's the that's the physical part of it. The spiritual part of it was one because Big Pac, Wolf, Wolf Mother, all the people that he did wrong, bro. You understand? They already won the battle where we were supposed to win it at. So now we just going through the physical part of it, man. And I want that girl to know, man, that she ain't got to fear no man. She ain't got to fear him, nobody else, man. Whenever she needs, you understand? Whenever she needs somebody to travel, to go with her, to make sure she all right, you know, I'm a phone call away, man. I'm a phone call away. And I'm, and you know, go ahead with your questioning, man. I just had to get that out, man, because that girl touched a lot of people, man, because all she wanted to do was write music, make music, and, 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 and show her talent and her love to the people, man. And then she got to feel this way, be fearful and scared of her life and stuff like that. Ma, I ain't scared of no man. You understand? I ain't scared of no man. Nobody that got to put their pants on the same way I do. Not at all. And for the people that don't know who Tiffany Red is, that's Cassie's best friend. That's one of Cassie's friends. She was writing a lot of music, and she said that she was writing music for her friends to get raped to. Oh, my God. Man, come on, man. Start with your interview. Uh, I'm sorry about that, brother, man. That's just, it's, it's, it's crazy to me, man. Man, you know, uh, uh, Leopard don't change his spots, and Diddy been doing this for a real long time, bro. He been doing this for a long time. And now another artist, this artist didn't wait 10 years. You know what I'm saying? He didn't wait 20 years. You understand? He waited a year or two after he stopped working with him and saw he didn't get what he was supposed to get. And he said, yo, listen here, man. I'm putting in my claims right now because I'm going to show everybody what really happened, what really went down. It's, it's crazy. When I was reading it, I read the, the whole thing. Shout out um, uh, to uh, Keisha in Kansas City. She sent me the whole the whole documentation, bro. And, you know, the whole court thing. And when I'm reading the stuff, you know, uh, it sounds from a lot of a lot of it sound familiar. You understand? And what I mean, sound familiar, how he would get other girls and get girls um, to try to, you know, convince this guy, you know, or, or, or put him in a sexual situation with other girls so he could do whatever he wanted to do with him. And it's, it's, it's just like the situation somewhat with Sarah and uh, her girlfriend and him and Ja, you know what I'm saying? Bringing girls on to try to convince this other guy to be in a room with another naked man and all this other bullshit. Yo, it, it all sounds familiar, man. I, I, I read the whole thing, man, and it was crazy. And for the people that don't know what you're talking about, because the lawsuit is new, so, you know, some people still catching up with it. Little Rod, he alleges that, you know, young Miami cousin tried to have sex with him in front of Diddy. Yeah, he went into the bathroom and then she came into the bathroom and tried to, uh, you know, throw herself on him. He didn't want to have nothing to do with her for whatever reason. And then when he came out the bathroom, 
she continued to try to do that and try to have sex in uh wanted him to have sex in front of uh Diddy and the rest of the people that was in there. You know that that's that's how they do, man. They try to use a girl that you might like or you may think you might like or they think you might like her or whatever to convince you to lay down your guards with them. And he didn't. Yeah, that's crazy, man. And you're not surprised by none of this. Because you said that Ja Rule, they did this to him, right? No, remember, remember, remember and people got to confuse when I said that Ja and him was in the room with two girls, with, was with Sarah and Sarah's girlfriend. You understand? He was trying to get Ja to go at Jay-Z. So what he did was try to get another girl, you understand, to do something with Ja. I guess, I don't know, they in the room together. So in, they, in, in, in that thing, I know what he was planning to do because I heard the conversation. I knew what was going on. He was trying to get at Ja. So if he had got Ja in any kind of uncompromising position, he could force Ja to go at Jay-Z. So that's just a, 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 a thing that they use. Lil Rod, he get him in a sexual position and a sexual situation with some kind of girl and then maybe have get him high, get him drunk, or whatever like that. He don't know what he's doing. One of the guys step in, and now he doing Lil Rod. Now Lil Rod all messed up in the mind because he started off with a girl, but now he end up with a guy. He trying to put him in some kind of situation like that. They do that all the time in the industry. So did he got a history of doing that? One thing I did see in this lawsuit, you know, Lil Rod, he alleges that you know, Diddy's son, Justin, was helping Diddy, you know, get underage girls. And I guess he was bringing them to parties. You know anything about that? I think Justin is the boy that could do it, if anybody. Him or either Quincy. You understand? Justin is a pretty boy. You understand? He looked young. He around that age, what, he about 25, 26 years old. So he, I don't know about underage, you know, uh, but it's a possibility because you know those girls 16, 15 years old, they gonna like that light skin, that curly hair, you understand? Man, listen here, we got girls that are, uh, what you call them, uh, uh, video vixens, and I ain't gonna mention no names because I don't wanna hear, they say they were sneaking into parties at 15 and 16 years old. So why you think 15 and 16 year olds ain't sneaking in the Diddy party? So. Lil Rod, if he having conversations with him, he may say, yo, how old are you or something like that? Someone say, I'm like 16, I'm 15. Somebody had to tell him their age for him to know who you came here with. I came here with Justin. So what did that say? Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. And looking at this lawsuit, right, Lil Rod, he alleges that, you know, did he promise him a Grammy if he participated in homosexual activity? I read that, man. You know what I'm saying? And what kind of power do you have when you could promise somebody a Grammy, a Grammy award? Who are you doing something with or who do you know that can promise? Beyonce can't. Did Beyonce get a Grammy for anything? Did she get a Grammy for an album or anything like that? Has she got a Grammy? She got Grammys before, right? Yeah, she got Grammys, but she never got one for album of the year, though. Right. So... If she never got a, a Grammy for album of the year and Diddy could promise a producer if he's in a homosexual act that he could give him a Grammy, what kind of power, who he doing or what he know that he could get that done? That's some kind of spooky shit, bruh. No disrespect. That's real spooky. If he could promise somebody. And good thing the kid didn't believe him because if the kid would believe him, he might have got his booty hole toe up. So my whole thing about it is, listen here, man, he has to have some real power, but he showed us his power. Remember at the BET Awards? Remember when they was trying to go to commercial? And he said, nah, we're not good. Whoever done that, bro? Whoever stopped the people <laughs> from going to commercial? Nobody ever did that but Diddy, bro. So he had some kind of power at one time. We don't know if he still got that power, but at the BET Awards, when they wanted to go to commercial, 
he did not allow them to go to commercial. So evidently, he knows somebody or he doing somebody or somebody doing him, allegedly. You talking about when he was giving that speech at the BET Awards for the Lifetime Achievement Award? When he gave his speech, he just kept going, bro. He just kept going and wouldn't stop. And he said, don't, it don't matter how much it costs. We're going to keep going. And they wouldn't even go to commercial. That's never happened before, bro. Never. And me looking at this lawsuit, he also alleges that Diddy forced him to watch a video of Stevie J having sex with a man. Who, little Stevie? Huh? <laughs> Who, Stevie? <laughs> what Johnson used to call him, Stevie? <laughs> Yo, I read that, man. Um, I don't know if you know this, but then maybe they have a tape that we don't, we could we didn't see because the pictures was a little vague. There was an exotic worker came out and said that was him and not Stevie J. But in order for them to put that in there, they must have clearly thought it was Stevie J or think it's Stevie J. But you got to get this art. Right, check this out. He knew that this kid admired Stevie J and loved the work Stevie J had done in the industry in the past. This kid looked up to Stevie J. Now, what if Puff told him that that was Stevie J in the tape? And the kid, the guy looked like Stevie J. He did facial, uh, they, his face, he did facial, his face was fixed like he was doing some of the faces Stevie J be making, you understand? So now, the kid could have been drunk, kid could have been high. He was like, yo, Puff could have been like, yo, you talking about, this is somebody you admire? Look what he doing. This Stevie J right here. Now, in that kid mind, he may have thought that was Stevie J, or he think that's Stevie J. If Puff told him that was Stevie J, it was Stevie J. So people can't say, oh, he lying and everything like that. Because we really don't know what was said, but the kid said he told him, this is somebody I admire. This is somebody you got high aspirations for that you that that you want to be like. Look and see what he's doing. This is what you should be doing too. Wow. That was crazy. And you knew Stevie J, right? I knew Stevie J Stevie J real well, bro. I knew Stevie J when he was with Bad Boy, one of the hitmen. When he, when him and Puff fell out, I used to uh, take Stevie J around and everything, bodyguard him in certain places and everything. Stevie J was one of those dudes. He was a good brother, but he always wanted to be seen. And when you hear these allegations, right, you knowing Stevie J, do you think it's possible that he could be gay? Well, I don't, I don't know his sexuality, but. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. You understand? And by cocaine being a hell of a drug and he indulging with Diddy like that and now he's invited to the Diddy parties in that, in that whole thing, if you read it, he said that Diddy said he was having sexual relationship with Stevie J. So all I can say is this, man. If two men lay down, how many homos get up? Two. <laughs> In my book. <laughs> That's all you can say, man. You don't know. You know, unless you catch him in an act like that. You understand what I'm saying? But if he said, Puff said that he laid down with Stevie J and two men lay down, two homos get up. Yeah, I mean, that's a hell of a quote, man. And if I'm not mistaken, Stevie J, he was with you the night Big got killed, right? Yeah, Stevie J was there. Stevie J was there. And as soon as Big died, he was supposed to get on the plane with us, with them, and go to New York. He rushed to Faith Hotel. <laughs> rushed just to the hotel. He was wearing my cross and my chain. Right? I said, Stevie, I'm not selling you my cross. My cross got blessed. He said, let me wear it. I said, yo, okay, bruh. Uh, he gave me fifteen hundred for the chain, and then never paid me for the cross. End up giving Faith the cross and the chain to give to little Chris Wallace. That's what he said he did with it. 
You think it's a chance he was cracking faith back then? I don't know what he was doing, bro. But it's funny they end up now. It's funny he ran to uh, Big's wife when uh, he got murdered. Yeah, that is weird, man. I never knew about that, man. You never told me about that, man. But to get back to this lawsuit, right, Little Rod, he also alleges that, you know, Diddy, he will grope his genitals and he will grope his anus. My man, I didn't understand that one right now because his anus is your asshole. His genitals is his nut. So I guess he had to be naked when Puff was doing that. Where was he at? What was he doing? Because he said that they never had sex. If you read it, in the thing, they never had sex. He made claims that they never had sex, but he, how would he grope your anus? Your asshole. How would he play with your genitals? Yeah, it don't make sense. I mean, it don't make sense. How you wake up butt the F naked with two other men in the bed with Diddy and nothing happened. I think he was just trying to save face, man. But do you think it's a possibility that he meant that, you know, Diddy will grope his, you know, butt, you know, instead of anus? I mean, because I'm, I'm trying to figure out how does that work? You know, somebody groping your anus. You're going to say your butt. He, he, the lawyer would say, what do you mean? He would say, my butt cheeks. There's a such thing called butt cheeks. Your two cheeks. He said anus. The anus is the asshole. How did he get that far? Lara, you got to say no to Diddy sometimes. No, that shit ain't funny, man. <laughs> but you got to say no. <laughs> so from you reading the lawsuit, right, you feel like he had relations with Diddy. When, when me... Being a former investigator, I think Lil Rod was trying to save face on certain things that he had somewhat of a relationship or he was doing some things with Diddy that he didn't want to really come out in that front fashion because there's no way that he going to wake up and his, his, his anus is hurting and his genitals is all over the place and he's in the bed after being drunk or drugged and saying nothing happened. And you think that Diddy going to be in the bed with three other men and nothing happened? It doesn't sound logical. If we're reading and believing what he said in those papers, if you woke, woke up in bed and you was drunk or intoxicated on ecstasy on whatever drugs that they put in there, roof eat you or whatever, and you not <laughs> and you not feeling right, something is wrong. Wouldn't you say? Something is wrong. He said, he didn't say we woke up with all my clothes. He said we woke up buck the F naked in those papers. So if he butt naked in those papers, It is what it is. Right, right. I got you. But looking at this lawsuit, right, you know, Little Rod, he alleges that, you know, Diddy, he'll put his hands on him. But, you know, when he'll put his hands on him, he'll disguise it as horseplay. But he felt like Diddy was trying to groom him, in a sense. Well, with the horseplay situation, I used to see him do that with certain women. You understand? Uh, when he was mad, upset, or, or he... He was too old for this, shit, but he would do that play fighting. Shit. You understand? So I can imagine him play fighting with Lil Ra, because you know a lot of people could say what they want to say about Diddy. You know, he got a knuckle game. He will fight you. You know what I'm saying? You his size. You understand something like that? Around your size, something like that. He would fight you. He had a knuckle game. He was he wasn't that dude that like people try to say he was some old. Scared bitch ass Nick. Nah, he would fight you. You understand? So I could see with a person like Lil Rod, he probably was roughing him up, grabbing him, 
groping him, you know what I'm saying, acting like he playing with him, but he actually want him to do what he want him to do. So, like I said before, that shit he did in the past. So when I read it from Lil Ra, I see he's doing the same shit he's doing in the future. So he was doing this with females too back then when you was around. Right. That that's how that's how him and Kim got into the fight. And he, you know, play fight. He used to he used to play fight with the pillows, like the pillow fight, that dumb shit like that. You know, that's kid shit to me. But if that's the way they do, that's the way they do. You understand? He used to do it with Kim all the time. So the horse play was his way of grooming you in a sense. Well, I don't that grooming, that's some new shit. You know what I'm saying? We didn't call that <laughs> we didn't call it grooming back then. That his horse play was a way of letting you know I could really hurt you if I wanted to. You get it? I could really hurt you. And that's what that kid probably felt. Yo, why he doing me like that? Oh, he just playing with you. No, he was letting you know if I turn this up, I could really hurt you. And that was his way of trying to get you to be submissive to him. Right. He's letting you know. He's putting it in your mind. Listen here, bro. He's trying to put in his mind, we're playing now, but if I really want to turn this shit up on you, it's on. You ain't got no wins. So that kid is feeling, yo, listen here. In his mind, if you read the documents, in his mind, he was so scared that when he went to other people in the camp and said, why did he treat me? Why did he doing this and doing that? They said, oh, he just playing with you because he love you. He like you. He, he was, no, he was trying to put that, instill that fear in you that he had in you. And he won. Yeah, that does make sense, man. And me looking at this lawsuit, he's also, you know, a legend that he met Cuban Gooden Jr. through Diddy on Diddy Yacht. And it even got to a point where he started touching him on his, you know, upper inner thigh near his groin, according to him. Did you see the picture? Nah, I didn't get to see it, but... Uh... Oh, my God. Cub Yo, listen to me, man. I don't know if it was what they call it when you take two pictures and they put it together and stuff like that. They they what they what they call it when the, they put the pictures together and it don't belong together, but they put it together. Whatever side by side. Yeah, whatever they call that. Shit, Cuba, Cuban uh, 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 Cuban Gooden Jr. was so close to that man. I would thought that was his lady. That's how close he was to him. And then his hands all on his leg and everything. It, 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 it was crazy, bro. I, I, I don't even believe that. So when you see Cuban Gooden fighting a case here in New York, when he said the girl was saying that he was groping her and everything like that, I'm glad they didn't show that picture at his trial. Because <laughs> he would have been guilty. That's how close he was to that kid, man. So you seeing on pictures, do you believe his claims? Yeah, I believe his claims. If somebody put something in Cuban Gooden Jr. ear that this was fresh meat or see, can you break him or see, can you do something? Because don't know other man be that close to no other man, man, for the for that reason. Come on, bro. That's crazy. Hey, do you know him? Have you ever met him before? No, I don't think I met him before. Cuba, I, can't, I can't recall me, though. Okay, and he also alleges that, you know, Diddy is the one that told him personally that he slept with Usher and Stevie J. But I, I mentioned that earlier, that he said about Stevie J. The Usher part, that that's a touchy situation, man. You know what I'm saying? Because I had a certain feeling, and I, I felt a certain way when Usher got on Shay Shay, and I don't mean to mention other people's platforms, but he got on Shay Shay and he mentioned how great and how good Puff taught him and everything. You know what I'm saying? About the business. Right? I know and people know that was around that in that time that 
Puff and Usher did have a situation. And that situation led Usher to the hospital. Now, I let Usher explain that to y'all. I let Usher tell that story. But how dare you say a man that groomed you, you gonna give him a pass. Bro, you know I know. Let me, re let, let me reframe you on something. Remember Usher? We was at the Swiss Hotel. Puff was had Kim in the room. Had one of Keith Sweat's baby mothers in the in in the uh the big room outside the master bedroom. He came outside in his robe. He came outside in his robe. She gave him a fellatio right there. His back was turned to me. She gave him a fellatio. You knocked on the door. I came and opened the door for you. Puff went in the room. You came in the room and kissed that girl dead in the mouth. Now I'm telling that because you take enough for somebody that you know and a lot of more people know didn't do you right when you was at Diddy Camp. Y'all put it together. And what you mean by Diddy Camp? Remember? He was on um, one of the talk shows. The white guy with the curly hair. What's his name? Um... The white guy with the curly hair. And he said, yo, would you send your son to Diddy Camp? And Usher said, no, no. Ask him why he won't send him to Diddy Camp. But yet and still, you praise him. Damn, man. And you said that, I know you can't go into detail, but you said that uh, it was a situation where Diddy sent him to the hospital? Let Usher explain that to you. Let Usher mom explain that to you. And the hospital was in Scarsdale, New York. Damn, oh, man. That's a wild situation, man. And he's also a legend that, you know, Diddy and his son Justin shot a producer named G, and they told him not to say anything and say it was a drive-by. Right. You heard about that, yeah? And, and that's the whole thing about it. Uh, when Diddy told the people that was in the, in, in, in the uh, I guess, at the studio that time, that said that it was a drive-by. This is what the little girl, uh, not a little girl, I'm sorry about that. Uh, her name is Tiffany Red. Just what she was speaking about on her thing, bro. She was saying like, in order to get in that studio, you gotta be buzzed in about three or four, uh, you gotta get buzzed in two or three times. There's no blood coming from the outside to the inside. There's all, he got pictures, I saw the pictures. He got pictures of all the blood and everything in the bathroom. He took pictures, bro. Now, Diddy is messing with an investigation of a shooting. If he told people to lie and tell the cops that it was a drive-by, and then he had people that he had hired, the people that he knew that was cops and there was friends of his that came in, that talked to the people, that's instruction. No, no. Uh, was it instruction? Uh, he's instructing uh, of justice when he's trying to interfere with investigation. He could be charged with that because nobody was ever found in the shooting. So that case could still be open because that kid was shot. Obstruction of justice. That's what it is. He obstructed justice because whoever shot that kid in the bathroom, well, it was Lil Wolf, I mean, Lil Wolf, I mean, I mean, Justin or Diddy. One of them did it because three of them went in the bathroom together. G, Justin, and, and, and Diddy. One got shot. Unless the kid gonna say he shot himself. 
But did he still obstruct justice because he had everybody, he told the people in the studio, he told all the people, and he lied and paid everybody off to lie. He probably paid the guy off who got shot and said, yo, man, listen, here, here take this money and say that uh, it was a drive-by. So if the DA wanted to get him on something, that's enough right there. That's a criminal act. That's an open case. But the police know it's a lie anyway. You know why? Watch that. Any of those studios, anybody that have insurance on a facility have to have surveillance cameras a certain amount of feet away from your facility. So if it was a drive-by, they would have to go to the videotape and the surrounding videotape. So they knew that was a lie. But because he had the money and he had the cops on his payroll, nobody did nothing about it. Yeah, that's crazy, man. They let him get away. But looking at this lawsuit, right, why do you think Little Rod is naming all these people in this lawsuit? Witnesses. He needed witnesses. And whether they work for Diddy or not, if they get caught lying on the stand about anything and he has proof that certain things happen, my man, he put me in a lawsuit. I wasn't even around this. My name is in there. Your name is in there. You understand? So my whole thing about it is, is that he want enough witnesses because you got to realize this. This is not a criminal case. This is a civil case. So now in a civil case, he has to prove that he was unjustly done. That Diddy did him wrong because if you read the lawsuit, he financially said, yo, give me 50000 and Give me my publishing, and we good. Diddy only gave him 29000 and didn't give him none of his publishing. And he wrote nine songs. So now he's going to add all these people, the, the, the weight, what was uh, the uh, chef them, seeing Diddy walk around naked. One other chef prior to this particular chef made claims and sued Diddy before because he was walking around her naked. So, remember I said, behavior don't change? He doing the same shit he did with the first chef. The girl who put, uh, the girl who uh, sued him before. So now he's doing it again. So all the people, the chef, the, uh, 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 the business manager, the people in the studio, they named everybody. For what? Because when they story come out, it shows a pattern of behavior that he has been getting away with. And people ain't going to lie for him and get caught in a lie and, and, and getting caught in contempt and go to jail because they lied. They perjured themselves. So he put everybody's name in that lawsuit so he can get a lot of witnesses. So what happens? You got a lot of witnesses. Do we want to go to court and listen to their story? They may want to settle out. But he said he got a high power lawyer. He ain't going to settle out. He going to prove everybody is lying on him. Yeah, we're going to see, man. I can't wait to see how this turned out. But also in this lawsuit, he alleges that, you know, Diddy was manipulating him by telling him that he was going to give him, you know, fame, money and property. How you feel about him saying that? Said he was gonna give him. A, said he was gonna get him a house out there on Star Island. He said a whole lot of things. So, but why would Diff, did he do that if they didn't have a relationship? Good point, Bruh, He was in the house with Diddy for about thirteen months. Out of that whole thirteen months. Did he ain't get lucky? <laughs> I know that shit ain't funny, man. <laughs> out of all the drugs, out of all the parties, 
all of all the times that he woke up in the bed with two other sex workers out of all the sex workers that he brought back to the house. Cause you got to realize remember in the suit, they said, did he made him wear this hat that says bad boy. That was a sign for the sex workers to know that he was the guy to come home with. Out of all that stuff that he did, did he never got lucky? I mean, you make a good point, man. You might be right, man. So that's what he said in the lawsuit. He said that Diddy would make him wear a hat that said bad boy. He would make, he would, if you read this in the thing, he would make him wear a hat that says bad boy with the bad boy logo. All the sex workers that had been dealing with Diddy all the time knew that that was the person they were supposed to connect with by the hat he had on. Bro, it's in the paperwork. I read the whole sh <laughs> It's in the paperwork. There's 14 causes and effect in that paperwork. Right, right. And he also said in this lawsuit that Diddy, he have not paid him for none of his work. Well, I think in the paperwork it says that uh, it was either an offer of, he asked Diddy for 50000 Diddy offered him twenty nine or something like that, or he gave him twenty nine, and he wanted twenty one, twenty one more thousand with all his publishing. But, bruh, they leaked this on tape. They leaked this on the internet. Diddy was sitting on the couch with one of the I don't know who he was, and the guy said to Diddy, Diddy said, "I'm the boss of this. Shit. I'm the boss," and he said, "Yeah, you are the boss." He said, but Lil Rob and sh we need to get all his publishing. That shit leaked on the internet. And I was like, oh, sh And then all this stuff came out. But look how funny it is, bro. He filed this sh September of last year. Why are we just hearing about it now? You know why we just not hearing about it? Why is that? Because they was trying to figure out some way to pay him and sweep this, let it go out, but it wasn't going through. So now they made it public. They made it public because they probably, it knows that they try to say that Lil Rob Lawyer's number is not uh, answering or they're not, you know, connecting with us. No, because they're not connecting with y'all because y'all numbers don't add up. The money that they looking for, y'all would y'all didn't want to give them that. So now we taking it to federal court to get the money that we feel like that we're entitled to. So now I'm looking at this whole thing. The kid was going to see a psychologist, a psychiatrist. He was trying to get help. So he could show damages. He got uh, uh, P PTDS, PTSD. He got a lot of different things that he was saying in the, um, in the paperwork that he's psychologically traumatized from the shooting, from the sex workers, all that. So he suffered from PTSD. Uh, he suffered from... Uh, anxiety. He suffered from post-traumatic stress. Uh, yep, that's PTSD, right? And he said that uh, he has been financially and uh, psychologically fucked up from dealing with Diddy. Damn, man, I didn't know he was going through all that. But he also alleged in this lawsuit that, you know, Diddy, he got a whole lot of hidden cameras around his house. And he feels like Diddy is using all that footage for blackmail. Probably so. I could believe that. I could believe that. I believe it's a lot of rappers, a lot of music people, a lot of executives that could not say no. Cat Williams say, you just got to say no to Diddy. And it's a lot of people that couldn't say no. And they probably on tape because they couldn't say no.
So you think it's possible that Diddy, he got footage of rappers in the stash, just in case he got to use it for blackmail? It's a possibility. I, 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 it's not far-fetched. If, if, if he was taping Cassie and he was having Cassie taped and everything like that, why wouldn't he do nobody else? She's the only one? I doubt it. Right. I mean, good point, man. But did you hear about that story from the actor Columbus Short? He told a story about how Diddy, he invited him to his house late at night. I believe him. I believe that Columbus Short, he, yo, bruh, why would that man come out? He got a whole wife or whatever come out and say that Diddy did something that he didn't do. He could have said anybody else. But Columbus Short, he let people know straight off the rack. Yo, if they talking about some homosexuality sh and it's about Diddy, it may be true. Because he tried me. That's what he said. That's what Columbus Shaw said. He tried me. And you notice the guys that don't fall for that sh**. They not popping in the industry. They not working. They not going to Hollywood. They not doing it because it's people like him that they cut short. Like Cat Williams said, when they don't give up their booty hole, they don't give up that sexuality, they cut them short. That means they not working in the industry like that no more. Yeah, that does make sense, man. I mean, but I want to go back to this lawsuit, right? Because I know you've seen the whole lawsuit. I couldn't see everything. It's like 75 pages. So, you know, I ain't had the time to look at everything. But she was telling me that, you know, Little Roy, he alleges that, you know, Diddy was making him do the same thing that he was making Cassie do, right? Where he was making him pick out sex workers with BBCs. Well, the thing about it is he has proof that he had to pick out the male sex workers, not only get the male and the female sex workers, he said that this is where it gets, where it becomes uh, a RICO act because uh, he had to use credit cards, he had to use money, he had to use uh, 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 credit cards, transfer money, and do all that stuff like that. So it's crazy that the same thing that Cassie said he did, she did, that's in his lawsuit in, back in September, that he had to do the same thing and he has the paper trail to prove it. He has the paper trail. He had to pick out the guys, but like I said, it's hard to believe that it was not a certain kind of relationship with him and Diddy by him doing that and then waking up in the bed naked. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, he had Little Rod doing the same thing that he was making his woman do. You know, he was treating him like one of his women. Had him, you know, picking out male prostitutes. So, <laughs> yeah, man, that's wild, man. Yeah. And then Little Rod said that, uh, uh, you know, this is what cost the RICO and uh, um, the trafficking laws. You understand? This is where uh, it, it becomes criminal because he was hiring sex workers and then Lil Rob being a worker for you and then he's transferring money. He's, what else they said? He was transferring money. He was, uh, you know, paying the sex workers and stuff like that. You know, with, uh, what they call it? through money grams or whatever, like whatever form of payments that he was doing, they were saying that uh, it constituted uh, a, a criminal empire and, uh, and, and, and because they were traveling from different states and doing it, wherever they went, it became, it, it made it a, 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 a RICO act with other people that was involved in it and they were they were helping by gaining, it was a criminal enterprise because they was helping by giving him the money and 
making it possible for all these things and all these sexual, uh, uh, all these people to be paid through these sexual, for doing these sexual acts. So it's the same Cassie was doing and I don't understand why the hell did he thought this should go to court? Yeah, because, I mean, he could have had this stuff before it came out. Yeah. They had September, October, November, December, January, part of February. They had four or five months. But how could he keep quiet that he pay a couple of million dollars to somebody? Or, or 10, 15, 20 million dollars. How could he keep that quiet? If, if you see the paperwork, have you seen the paperwork that was submitted to the courts? They have different videos on different sections and different videos that they saying that they have the full video of it. It's going to be real exciting. Real exciting. I'm going to give you this last sound bite on this joint because you missed this. Meek Mills. Well, he said a Philly rapper. You understand? And it was retracted, redacted in the paperwork to that because, first of all, it had Meek Mills, it had Stevie J. They had redacted their names and they had Usher and they redacted their names and just said a performer of the Super Bowl and a Philly rapper. Everybody kind of knew back in the day that Meek Mills and Puff was a little too friendly. Anytime two rappers or two people in the industry come dressed up alike on more than one occasion. They, my man, listen here, man. My dudes in Philly, I got some real strong dudes in Philly. They don't play that shit. And they probably embarrassed for the fact to see that Meek Mills, one of the street guys that came out of there, got caught up in this highly weird shit. This Hollywood sh where is that he's dressing like he dressing the same. Sh he dressing like Diddy. Hugged up with Diddy. I think that. Lil Rod know a lot of. Sh but I know this. Two men dress alike. It's just like two men laying down. When they both get up, <laughs> they both homos. <laughs> and that's real talk, bro. My man, you come to, a, you go to a party, dog, and the nigga got the same shirt you got on, I'm taking my shirt off. I'm walking around in a t-shirt. And then, not to blow Meek Mills up out the water or anything like that, it was said that they checked his Google search and all the other shit, and he was searching for some online gay porn and all the other shit like that. Oh, wow. That shit is crazy, bro. But listen, those are those are what you know it's crazy that money that lifestyle and you trying to fit into something get you these guys never set out to do all this shit. meek mills when he got into the game he didn't set out to be uh uh question about his manhood with diddy but he put that self, himself in that position. And looking at this lawsuit, you know, Little Raw, he also claiming that, you know, when he would go to parties with Diddy, Diddy, he was lacing up the woman drinks with drugs. How you feel about him saying that? You believe that? I read that. And, and if that's what he saw, if he could prove that, and he has a lot of video. He said he had hours and hours of video. So people know how certain people act at the one drink, two drinks. And if those girls was drinking out those bottles that he said Diddy Lace and he could show on camera and he could show that some people had passed out or some people were 
act in a certain way after they had those drinks. He won his case on that one. When you was around Diddy, was he doing drugs? Like party drugs, like ecstasy and stuff like that. Diddy wasn't the dude he is today when we was around, when I was around him. You understand? He had started. He had just started. When I was about to leave, he had just started with the... Because he never smoked weed. He never smoked cigarettes. I never seen him do cocaine or none of that shit. You understand? He would have it for people to do it. You understand? It's certain, certain of his girls like to do it, and he would make sure it would be there. But he wasn't the one that did it. Then he didn't start getting hooked on drugs until he got hooked on those painkillers. After he got hooked on those painkillers, he started drinking more because he wouldn't even drink hard liquor. He was only drinking champagne. Don P or Cristal. He was not drinking hard liquor then. Yeah, that's real talk, man. And he also claims that, you know, Diddy, he was using T.D. Jakes to fix his image. You believe that? Well, we saw that to be true anyway. That's what he was trying to do all that time. That's why T.D. Jakes was there. To try to fix his image. Ain't no money like church money. He was doing all the things to try to get his image straightened up. I mean, it makes sense. And he also said in this lawsuit that when he was around Diddy, he seen Diddy give out guns, a lot of guns. And he said that the environment around Diddy was violent. Well, I don't, I don't know. He, said also, he also said Diddy distributed firearms and was selling drugs. And I don't know how far-fetched that is. I don't know if that's true or not and stuff like that. Maybe, you know, Diddy may have had guns around and was fronting. Because they do have guys who, if you need guns and stuff like that, call your man them over. He'll bring over five or six, seven, eight guns and you'll probably buy them from them. They had that type of, you know, connection with people. Wendy Williams, what you think about what's going on with her right now? Oh, my man, that's crazy. That was heartbreaking. I watched that whole show, bro. And uh, I remember Wendy way back when, and I've seen her at the radio station uh, when I used to uh, go up there and take people up there for K-Slay. And I seen her, first time I seen Wendy, she was trying to talk to me. You know what I'm saying? And I remember telling the guy, Yo, Wendy who? He said, yo, Wendy Williams. She want to know who you are. And I said, uh, where's she at? And she was on this, uh, like this, 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 this chair, like a mantle sitting up on the stage and stuff like that. That's just go right there. And I was at the bar chilling. I had bought some champagne, a, a bottle, stuff like that, setting it up for my friends and them to come in. And they said, Wendy want to know who you are. And I said, who I am? And I looked at her, she said, uh, yeah, Wendy Williams, that's what I said, I would know, I, I was told to do, I said, I would have to see her baby pictures. You know, and the dude said, well, what you mean by that? I said, yeah, I would see, I had to see her, <laughs> she said, Wendy Williams, you know, cause she didn't, you know, look real feminine to me at the time. I said, I would have to see her baby pictures. You know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? And he just, uh, he just looked at me and it was the dude Skeletor. Um, so when I was watching the whole Wendy Williams thing, I used to go to her Don's and Divas party. You know what I'm saying? I knew her husband, Cal. You know, because my man Chaz used to do business with him or whatever like that. You know what I'm saying? Because they used to do those, those Don's and Divas party. You know, so then she got with Cal. Cal was a street dude, you know, out of Brooklyn. People knew him. So, long story short, to see that she went through the stuff and how that that drug, alcohol, and cocaine ruined probably one of the greatest talk show hosts life is a template for everybody who wants to be in the entertainment business 
to see that you could be at the top of your game and you could be at your bottom of it. The same ladder you go up is the same one that you must come down. And that drugs and that alcohol don't mean you no damn good because it has torn up one of the greatest minds of radio of our time down. So it was heartbreaking to see Wendy in that type of situation, bro. How you feel, and I hate to ask you about this, but you know, you see it on social media, so I want to get your opinion. How you feel about the people that say that, you know, what she going through right now is karma? So let me ask you a question like this. Is she the first gossip column? Nah. She was just doing what the, she was, she had an avenue and she had a lane that was done better than anybody who did it before. That came before her. But I'm talking about her, you know, coming at people, you know, coming at people, you know, beefing with people, you know, spreading rumors that wasn't true. And one, for example, you know, her saying that Tupac got raped in prison. You know, he did an interview complaining about what she said and how, you know, it was a lie. So, you know, stuff like that, you know. They, they was, it was, it was a lot of people that was doing that before. It was, dog, people was exposing that way before then. What about James Brown? They talk about James Brown beating his wife. They talking about Marvin Gaye being strung out on cocaine way before Wendy Williams. They had gossip column, they had shit like that, but she just perfected it and she was great at it. And she came and she brought it to the forefront of television. You understand what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's no different. It's just the way she did it made it seem like it may have been salacious or something like that. It wasn't. It was just her doing it her way. I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't blame her for what she did. I don't think it's nothing, it's nothing different from a lot of these people who come on here who claim like they journalists. She went to school. You understand? A lot of people claim to be journalists like you, myself, we all come on here, but who has an education in journalism? Who has an education in, in broadcasting? Who has an education in communication that they could come and develop a program and stuff like that? You don't have to have that anymore. You got people coming on here and they and they talking, they shit, doing their thing. You understand? But there's none other like Wendy Williams, man. None other like her. I was looking at an interview from Jaguar, right? And I want to get your opinion on it. She told a story about how she knows a lawyer that walked in on Christopher Williams giving Diddy fellatio for a demo deal. You know anything about that? You heard about that? Bruh. I don't know how true that is. I've heard that shit, but I know Christopher Williams. And I know Christopher Williams was a crazy, gangster-ass nick from Mount Vernon. From up in that area, Westchester. He didn't play that shit. He kept that 3-2 or that 38 on him, and he will shoot the shit out you. You understand? He was, he was, he was, rough with his hands with the women. And the story went on and said that a lawyer walked in the office. When she walked in the office, she walked right out and she said it was a dude and she said it was Christopher Williams. It was one other brother. And I forgot his name that worked with Bad Boy. Him and Christopher Williams could have been brothers. And if anybody was doing that, it would have been him, not Christopher Williams. Do you understand that? Him and Christopher Williams could have been brothers. That's how close, that's how they, that, they had the same look, light skin, the little low on the side, curly hair and stuff like that. I would never believe it was Christopher Williams. You understand? But that other cat, yeah. You, you got to realize, when you walk into something, there's very few people, if they walk into something like that, they're going to, Stare there and look and just be all into the shit, right? There's very few people going to do that. When you walk in something that's very inappropriate, you're going to 
back up out, especially women. You understand what I'm saying? So now, if she's seen a glance, she only going to see a glance. Now, if somebody who looks like Christopher Williams, maybe. But then you got to look at it like this. Was she in the office all the time? I don't remember us having a lawyer in the office like that. Or she was just coming by that particular time. I don't know. I don't know the situation. I, don't, I, I, I want to stay off that. But I know from knowing Christopher Williams, having an altercation with him before, and knowing people that know him, he's some old crazy gangster shit. And why would he? Puff it? Nah, bro. Puff wasn't that damn big back then. Keefe D, what you think about that situation, yo? What's going on with that? Well, uh, I spoke to Keefe D's son, and Keefe D's son said that uh, he was all right, he was fine. He never got beat up in jail. All that was bullshit. He in jail with family or you know, friends, and he's doing good. They just trying to get this money up so he can come home. I don't think you're going to get the money, bro. Who's going to put the money up for that? Yo? I don't know, man. I don't know. Do you still feel the same? You think he's still going to win it? I know he's going to win it. I know he's going to win it. You got to realize he got a trial by judge. The judge has to follow. The judge has to follow the letter of the law. There's only circumstantial evidence and hearsay on a murder case. Appreciate you. I'll holler at you later.